Euzu billahi mineşşeytanir racim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiyullah ti rasulü ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis a daifu, miskinu, zalim, a jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us to enter into the month of Safar, the month of Surat Al-Kahf and the reality of the cave and to be from the companions of the cave. That in this journey of the reality of the power of nine and the twelve pardeh, the twelve veils in which only Allah are giving from Shams al-Ma'arif, Shams al-Arifeen of the way towards Gnosticism and the reality of their saintly guidance. That they move through the ninth surah, Surah Tawbah and enter into the gate of Tawbah. And in that gate of Tawbah Allah no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Bismillah Allahu Akbar that their life is dedicated in which to slay and destroy their bad character. And from Surat Al-Tawbah Allah guides them to the 18th surah, the next nine. The 18th surah Surat Al-Kahf is the companions of the cave and this becomes the entire guideline for the way of tariqahs, that every secret in this holy surah is a isharat for guidance and the mannerisms in which to guide the seekers into the heart of the Divine Presence. Alhamdulillah they taught to us then the heart of that Divinely Presence is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Ashab al-Kaf Allah is giving to us that any time the dunya is filled with difficulty and evilness, seek refuge to the cave. Means there's a direction and a location in which the believer is supposed to take themselves. They didn't say stand there and fight the negativity but direct yourself to the cave, run to the cave. And in that cave Allah will set out a rahmah and mercy. So then that must be an immensely powerful cave that if you live a life in which to direct yourself to the cave. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Gave Allah's promise to set a mercy and set your affairs in order because dunya is fear of rizq. Only reason people participate in dunya is because shaitan tells them that you're going to be poor, you're not going to have anything. The fear that shaitan runs with is for their sustenance and Allah promises that to the companions of the cave and those whom trying to emulate and copy the reality of the companions of the cave, the Muhammadan cave, the highest of its realities, is that direct yourself to the cave, run from what shaitan is making you to believe especially in the time of Dajjal, that's why it's every Jummah to be recited. Why? Because every Jummah is a reminder that Dajjal is present, Dajjal is coming more than ever we are living in the systems of Dajjal. So it's an immense, immense protection. It's an immense protection to recite it 
more important is to understand Surat Al Kahf, it's a guidance into the cave. And the tariqahs, the turuqs and the paths, their path is to the cave, their whole reality is to reach to that cave, their whole purpose is to guide students back to this cave of Rahmah and it has all of the disciplines and its realities. And then Allah says, we'll settle your affairs, don't let shaitan to make you fear that no I have to be outside of the cave and I have to run through the shaitanic system. Allah says, don't worry come into the cave we settle your affairs. Means the barakah and the blessing is so immense in this Muhammadan cave, in this ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad what the nut was reciting. Karam al agha. Yes. This is the nut because they were fooled. Run and, and uh, lift every heavy thing and do everything that you, you have to do for dunya and run, 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 run out of the fear that it's going to finish. And then karam al agha means the immense miracle of your immensely position. As soon as I came to your love, everything was flowing upon me, dressed my soul, dressed every reality of my soul. And we said before, it's like beads of knowledge that will become a tasbih of your haqqaiq. That when Allah dresses your soul, then you have power. The one whom seeks the power of dunya has nothing from akhirah and his power is fake and false. That's why he said, now everybody in dunya like this, up, up high and the people of akhirah they look very low. But because dunya is not the correct image it's actually like this because they are the people of akhirah and in akhirah there are kings. But on this earth they look like they're nothing and the people who look high on this earth they're in the pits of the bottom because this is a, a reverse of the reality. We are a reflection this earth, its true reflection is in the heavens. That which you grab of dunya and spend all your life to achieve only from dunya, you lost akhirah. But the one whom runs for his akhirah and if Allah grants him the reality of these lights, Subhana ladhi bi yadihi mulk. What was the rest? Kulli shay. Kulli shayin qadir. Kulli shay. Glory be to the hand who reached the mulk of this malakut and he encompasses all powers, all powers. Allah is giving His Subhan onto the hand that reached that reality. The glory be to the hand that reached this world of light, His powers kulli shay, His powers all encompassing. The one whom controls and been given from the inside by virtue of that reality already controls the outside. But the one who went outside he lost everything inside, he has nothing. He's holding something like a, 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 a tomato that's rotting because dunya is dying, everything is a corpse on its process of death. And shaitan fools people to think, no spend all your effort on akhir, don't worry about these people what they're talking. But in reality these people have a lot of power. The whole of dunya is at their feet waiting for their du'a. How it can assist them, how it can help them, it's not something that can be understood but Allah is granting. So, I will set your affairs to be in order, don't worry. Come to Allah the one whom writes all checks, who provides all provision who grants all healings, no one else, nothing else. So then they understood when Allah wants to guide them. Then in the next ayah Allah begins to describe, whom we guided we have guided. Then like a legal contract, those who we did not guide they will never have waliun murshidun. Whom we guided, we have guided. 
So verse 16 of Surat Al-Kahf, those whom have no guidance that we did not guide, we will not guide, they will never find a waliun murshidun. So it means what? Guidance must be at the hands of a wali murshid, not a murshid but a murshid who is and reached wilayat and that they have extraordinary gifts from Allah for the station of their guidance because blind cannot lead blind. Their heart must be open and their satellite communication must be coming to guide people towards that reality. So this is just synopsis of where we have been going with this surah inshaAllah. <clears throat> if they enter into the cave and they're under that tarbiyah, Allah then begin to describe that these companions of the cave, we sealed their hearing. And then they entered into their state and in that state they thought that they had rested a day or half a day. So very short period of time in their estimation means now giving us understanding of traveling through space and time. They didn't say, oh this was a long sleep, unbelievable but we're still alive. But they say, was this a day or half a day? And Allah describes, had you seen them you would have thought them to be awake. So they have a, a wakeful state but yet they're in a deep reality and through that reality they're able to move through space and time, 300 and then 9, 309 years they entered a space and in a flash it became 309 years in the future. They ran from a people who wanted to kill them because they said, we have to run, this person if we don't worship what he tells us he will kill us. And in the entrance into the cave Allah did something and a hijab and parda upon their ears, 309 years have passed. So it means immense, immense realities Allah is describing within this miraculous cave. That's not a drop, not a drop in a reality in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because everything from Prophet down is just a mere example of the reality of who Prophet is. So real Ashab al-Kahf is the cave of Prophet that he took Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq into the cave Salam, and that is the cave of all realities. And they say that every atom and arwa of creation was present within that cave. To be present in that reality, to be dressed in that reality and every Muhammadan haqqaiq is of the highest reality. All of the lesser examples were examples of the Muhammadan haqqaiq. So means then the Ashab al-Kaf of Sayyidina Muhammad those whom are running towards that reality, the immensity of what Allah is dressing their souls, blessing their souls. And that Allah with all of these powers that are going to come, Allah draws our attention to hearing. Because you would think that somebody sleeping would be a veil on their eyes. But this reality had nothing to do with their eyes, had to do with the level and the reality of hearing. Because the hearing, sifat as sami has a direct influence to your soul. Your door to soul is your ears, the window to your soul are eyes. And Allah said, enter every home through the door, through the correct door. So this coding of Qur'an, they come and teach us that your soul's door is your ears and that's why shaitan is now fighting for the ears of mankind. And what the master of all realities 
Allah azze ve cel name Seyyidina Muhammed sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Yasin sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem that the one whom has yaqeen as safat as sami ya yaqeen seen as as sami the one whom hears min azimat and the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad is that he hears and Allah created him to hear in complete perfection. As a result he speaks, the one who hears Allah speaks for Allah. Everyone else only hears Sayyidina Muhammad they don't hear Allah And that's why Allah's speech is called Qur'an and Allah described, if I reveal my Qur'an onto the mountain it will be dust. But it's revealed to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and firm, nothing moves. The Prophet is created for that reality. So it means all the Prophets they are not inheriting from that reality. They hear Prophet So the Muhammadan haqqaiq of Yaseen the one whom Allah because of that granted Habibullah. The one who heard me I created him his soul to hear me. Not an angel hears me, not a prophet hears me, nothing hears me but Sayyidina Yaseen And Allah's qul and Divinely Qudra Qaf Lam is qul, Allah's Divinely speech only flows into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad One power, one source, this is Tawheed. La ilaha illallah only flows into Muhammadun Rasulullah and every amr that comes out is from the tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad Lisan al-Qadeem, the ancient tongue of Allah called Muhammadun Rasulullah So it means it establishes its understanding. It's not linear in which everything hears Allah it's not the Turkish bazaar. Nothing hears Allah but Sayyidina Muhammad Kullun amrun wal irada Every command and every will of Allah emanates in the soul of Prophet The amr is what will be spoken and the irada is the will of Allah that emanates, complete unknown that emanates in the soul of Prophet when Allah wants it to be known, the command will come and then will be spoken. To malaika, budal, nujab, niqab, awtad wal akhyar, jinni wa malaika. Seven categories of ulul am will begin to take that conveyance and the amr of Allah that emanates in the heart and on the tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad that's why Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum, obey Allah, nobody can. Then Allah gave Ati Rasul because the Ati Allah is only for Prophet to hear Allah and then the ulul am are waiting from isharat and command of Sayyidina Muhammad means then this immense power of Al-Sami. So then the Ashab Al-Kaf must be trained by these waliyun murshidun on how to hear, how to perfect your hearing so that you're a nation in which Samina wa atana, that we hear and we obey. Now we hear and disobey. We hear and we argue. That reality will never open for the servant. The servant's only ability to open these realities is that Allah described, we put a parda on their ear. Means that they understood that the greatest fight on life right now is for hearing. What you hear, what you hear of whisperings, what you hear of songs and sounds of every vibration 
is either lowering your soul or raising your soul. A day will come where Islamic law will be understood by knowledge and by power and energy. Sharia is confusing for people, sit here and debate the madhabs. You can go all above all of that and just talk energy. Either your energy vibration is going to be raised or it's going to be lowered. No other discussion and debate is of any relevance. Is this halal, is this haram? It'll all be understood by the energy. Is it raising your energy and your vibration or is it lowering your energy and your vibration? If it's lowering you're going to be attacked and you can come under attack because every lower creation and lower desire and lower creature is then able to attack that servant. So we said there's a, a day is now coming with the road and the path for everybody, there's going to be a right where you're moving towards Allah's cave, then there'll be a choice for the left. Many clever people say, I won't make any choice. But it doesn't work that way because these creatures will pull you. But what we said in the not now again, the murad al-qalb, the one whom calls the hearts to his direction is the cave of mercy. That this love and this ishq, these majlis of love of Prophet is creating a bond where Prophet described, you will be with whom you love. Means then what has to be achieved is love. Ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad it will make this murad al-qalb and the love of Prophet begin to call our heart into the right cave. And you be with whom you love, all we have to do is learn how to love Prophet When we love our soul is moving in that direction. Then if it moves in that direction you know what's right and wrong. You don't have to study and memorize fiqr books. You're going up or you're going down in your vibration. You watch that movie, you're going up or you're going down. You listen to that song, you're going up or you're going down. You want to put something in your mouth, is it going to take you up or it's going to take you down? If you want to try to inhale something, whatever you think a fatwa is, you think it's going up or you're going down. Everything will be understood by energy, very clear this eight-year-old can understand it. Anything we do our choice is either is going to take the vibration up or it's going to bring the vibration down. If the vibration going down, 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 what happens? Then the creatures from the other side, they will be calling that servant in that direction. So it means just from its energy understanding, it's calling and then the immensity of the power. So when shaitan knows that haqqaiq, insan and humans don't know. When the devil knows and the agents of the devils know, then he can fight you by sound, fight you by backbiting, fight you by television shows and every type of bombardment that now is a great fight for the ears of creation. Why? Because every bad sound that we hear, if you turn TV on is ghaybat, it's 100% just backbiting, just backbiting. Why? Because shaitan is attacking your soul. He's not providing you entertainment, he doesn't care that you're entertained but he knows the reality is that I'm after your soul. I'm going to bring your vibration so far down that you will be possessed in a second. You walk out on the street and a creature has entered you, you speaking different, thinking different, acting different, right? Even you can recite and feel different. That happens every day, it didn't take but a second. You enter into a wrong space and that creature entered in. Why? Because the vibration of the person was at a level that was low enough for that creature to enter. But if the vibration is strong, 
There's no way for that creature to enter because there's a now an interference in the vibration field. So it means then our life is about either going up or going down on this vibration. So then you make a graph saying, oh a thousand is high and then medium level and then below. And if my life, I can judge everything I'm going to do, what I want to do, is it going to take me up, going to take me down? Then they would describe, never miss the zikr for a week. Keep yourself connected at least once in seven days. I say, why? So it was a cleansing. Now we understand how this is a cleansing by energy and vibration. If throughout the day, let's say you started the zikr, everything's fantastic, you're a thousand. Come Monday, ding, all this yelling, screaming, bad words at work down 200, television shows all week long down 400, the yelling, screaming and listening to this and that, the radios down, down, down. By the end of the week you're at about 300 and capable of being possessed. Then what happens when you enter into the zikr, whether it's home or live, the khatam and the zikr and the milad al nabi enters every space, its energy enters every space. That we said before the reality of these associations is the attendance of all seven categories of spirituality must be attending the khatams and zikrs and the milad al nabi There is not a majlis of Salli ala nabi that is not attended, not attended by these seven categories. Do you think that there is an angel in this creation that the minute you begin your majlis the angel doesn't come to attend? How will it answer to Allah, oh I didn't feel like it, I, I was busy over there. They must attend. Anything of a pious nature comes to attend to receive an immense amount of power. As a result of their power that they're receiving, their madad and support upon the majlis empowers the majlis. So whether you're home, as soon as you put that on the speaker, those energy beings because their sense of hearing is not like ours. Immediately they're aware of that association and they must attend the association in the house, wherever it is. As soon as that association begins, the majlis begins, the power is emanating. So imagine now their vibrations are 10,000, not like ours, they're pure energy souls. So all of a sudden 10,000 watts has entered into your living room. And as soon as you enter with all your low frequencies, what Allah said, Qul ja'al haqq, tell them when the truth comes falsehood is perishing. These are the representations of Allah's truth. Allah's truth is a vibration and light. When the light of these realities enter into these associations, immediately everything is vibrating on their power. And every lower frequency, everything attaching itself like a, like a hot wire. We went into traveling in the world and in, in dangerous areas. There are certain communities very famous for disrupting the government because they would hijack the electrical line. They didn't want to pay for electricity so they put wires on the electricity. And they had like a city within a city, they didn't pay taxes, they just sort of vampired the electricity of the community. So it means that every creature that is vampiring you, locked onto your energy because they don't have the energy, those majlis and those associations have an immense power. They can't stand in that association because Allah's words are true. They tell them when the truth comes falsehood goes and falsehood by its nature is perishing. Those uh, dirty creatures, they can't stand in the face of that energy that's got, it burns them. It's like you trying to stand in the middle of your barbecue. It's a fire, it's coming, you've got to run from the fire. Well that for them is a fire, it's an immense fire of light. And that's why Allah gives for us to see the vampire movies, right? They're wicked, they're bad, but how all of a sudden sunlight burns them? Because Allah is teaching for us that they have, however evil is, 
it has actually no ability to stand in the presence of light. And if a million evil things have encompassed, one match can begin to illuminate. One drop of light is the miraculous nature of light, light can't be put out. You can have millions of darkness but if you light the torch of hope and light that one light, it's illuminated and begins to shine. So it means that the power that comes into these associations immediately shatters all the negativity and the negativity runs because its nature is perishing, it will be obliterated by these lights. So when they want to keep their existence they run, they don't sit there to vanish like a vampire. So it means the associations have an immense cleansing, the association begins, the powers are going, the zikrs are going and immediately brings everybody back to their charge of 1000. And that's why the awliya were teaching, don't miss your zikrs. It's a shower and a cleaning for you, it's not an entertainment. Because people think, oh they just, they're reciting, they're reciting, why we don't go do salah? Well, it's not the same, your salah you don't know if it's going to be accepted. Kul a'malun bin niyat, what was the intention of your salah? Where Allah guaranteed that everyone's salah they're going to be going to paradise? Your salah has to be judged based on your intention. What was the intention of the person praying? But these actions of muhabbat and love, they have no judgment. These are just pure energy associations that you're coming as a voluntary worship and you're going to be dressed by realities that can't be understood. So means these majlis are immensely powerful associations meant to destroy evilness and wickedness and to recharge everybody's battery and their soul energy comes and gets recharged by the association. That is the power of the realities of hearing. So when shaitan is coming and fighting for the hearing of people, Allah is not leaving His creation to just fall in the hands of shaitan but then spreading the majlis of zikrs and associations of Salli Ala Nabi as a source of immense power, immense lights and immense energies. We pray that Allah open for us that understanding and the immense blessings of that understanding inshaAllah we'll go to Surah 28, Haji Shahid will recite Surah 28 from Surah Al-Kahf inshaAllah. <coughs> A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wasbir nafsaka ma'al ladheena yad'oona rabbahum bilghadati يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من غفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم مدرك الرسول الكريم <clears throat> in the rules of this isharat then Allah is granting us an immense mercy that this is a, a reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because all our lives we're told, don't ask Prophet to listen to you but ask that the holy nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad be upon you. So our life and the source of our power is the nazar of Prophet why you do good? Allah look at you, oh given but if you want Allah to look at you it should be Prophet looking at you. 
if you got the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad looking at you, know that Allah sees through his eyes. But if you did something you think Allah's looking at you but Prophet is not looking at you, if Sayyidina Muhammad didn't think to look at you, don't think Allah's looking at you. Because nazar and tajalli and, and barakah it's flowing. If my Rasul doesn't deem you worth looking at, why would I look at you? So then these are guidances of power that do the deeds and the actions to get the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad he is your Imam, your King and your way. If his nazar upon you then know that Allah's nazar is with that, his power is with that. Those beautific eyes are dressed by Allah's might and majesty. And that becomes the source of every beauty and fragrance and blessings in our life. Everything closed will be opened by the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad Every difficulty to be relieved by the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad Every du'a to be granted will be granted by the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad The same rule, why Allah to take you out of a difficulty if Prophet is not praying for you. Allah doesn't come without Prophet is the Khalifa. If you didn't get the attention of this blessed soul, why Allah coming? So then Allah clarified, I am with, I am with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. these are the best of company. I am with them. If they're not with you, I'm not with you. That who are you keeping a company with? So our life was to be definitely with Nabiin. And then Prophet taught us, if you love me, love my companions, love my family, love my Ahlul Bayt. So then we love the Siddiqeen, the shuhada, the ulama who are inheriting from the Siddiqeen. And if we're with these ulama, their entire majlis are salihin and Allah said, I'm with them. You want to be with me? Be with that crowd. So then our life is for this nazar. Then Allah is granting from these guidance of this cave, keep yourself patient. This is an understanding between Allah and Prophet Keep yourself patient with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and in the evening seeking His holy face and let not your eyes pass beyond them. Allahu Akbar. Keep yourself busy with zikr, keep yourself busy with your tafakkur because this is the, the cave in which Allah promised you a rahmah and I'm going to settle your affairs. Now He's showing you how He's going to settle His affairs because He gave a guidance to His King. Keep your nazar busy with this category of servants whom they're busy with their zikr, busy with their reflection, busy with their cleaning. Ahl sufa the, the, the people of the bench, why? Because they sat with their love for Prophet they dedicated their being, their love. And Allah's guarantee is a command to those holy eyes, keep it on them, keep that blessing upon them. Because at any moment what they need, what they desire, what they're coming short of, your nazar will dress them, bless them and give them everything they need. If you should take your nazar off of them, they'll be in distress and in difficulty. It's an immense guidance, an immense reality that Allah gives a description of how I'm going to settle your affairs. You think that without this nazar, these shaykhs can talk like this without shayatin eating them and destroying everything about them? It's because of the power of that nazar that continuously on them like a sunshine that shines upon their face for not a, comp not a single dracula to come out, the one whom is always encased in sunlight. 
right? Because otherwise the vampires would have eaten him by now. If he should fall into a minute of darkness, that's what the vampire movie is showing. You're going, 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 all of a sudden there's a shade the vampire ate you because he's shielded from that. But the one whom is continuously under this nazar is his protection. His nazar more powerful than the sun that we know. The shining upon shining. that soul, gazing upon that soul, what is it coming short, what is it in need of, what are the blessings required by, what is that soul praying for? That nazar is the one that is saying, Ameen and Allah is granting upon it. It's an immense, immense power. And then what Allah is, is saying, and don't let your eyes pass beyond them and desiring the worldly life. Just don't look to the people whom maybe they have big, huge this, that, uh, all the, the emirs and the sultans of regions that look like they're, they're so special that you'd be astonished. Allah said, don't even look to them, that don't lift this holy nazar off of these people whom are struggling and striving for your love. Don't even look to those people, they're not worth the gaze. Not to obey those whose hearts and gifts for us, never to obey those whose hearts they've become heedless of the remembrance of Allah Never follow the guidance of someone who does not do zikrullah. This is sharaf from Allah to the king and the king's guidance to our heart, never seek guidance from someone who is not doing zikr. Because his heart Allah is describing became heedless of dhikrullah, he's heedless of Allah and the remembrance of Allah and Allah describes that person whom is heedless of zikrullah, his affairs will go nowhere, his garbage his affairs. So the one whom their affairs are in garbage, don't seek their counsel, don't seek their advice, don't seek that anything from them is coming to you of any benefit. Means then the conditioning for Ashab al-Kaf and the students of Ashab al-Kaf is immense power. Allah is giving to us a reality that all your good deeds, all your good actions, your mawlid, your celebrations, conducting yourself as ambassadors of love and ishq, going out onto the streets and giving food, why? So the Prophet's nazar be upon us. If Prophet's gaze begins to like a radar fall upon you and look into your heart with this ishq and this love, Allah has guaranteed your success. Because Allah's lights are following with those eyes, dressing you, blessing you. And then Allah is warning for us that, oh you are the people of the students of this cave, that if a person became heedless in the dhikrullah, in their remembrance and their love for Allah if they became heedless of their love for Allah imagine then how heedless they are for the love of Prophet then Allah said, never obey them, never obey them, never seek their counsel, don't take any guidance from them. That's why then the tariqah students, they stick with their tariqah environment, they stick with their shaykhs. They know that the, the shaykh and the authority of the shaykh and those whom they are ahlul dhikr, their hearts are alive and illuminated with the love of Allah love of Sayyidina Muhammad and they don't ever come and quote somebody whom is a dead-hearted person because now everybody on YouTube is coming and quoting somebody else and their hearts are dead. You ask them, can you make zikr? They even say, no, you can't. Most of these associations cannot even take place in a masjid in, West, in Western America because they say that zikr is not allowed. So then what tells you what Allah thinks of them? That if they are heedless of their dhikr and the remembrance of Allah Allah don't, don't even get near them, go back home, don't even be in the presence of these people. Their affairs are rubbish and they'll take you away from the remembrance of Allah and definitely the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad This is an immense gift in this holy month. And this holy reality that Allah is granting those whom struggling within the cave a, a guarantee 
of the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad May we do the, the deeds and the actions necessary for Allah to dress us and bless us and that Sayyidina Muhammad be pleased with us. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.